to install this uh, power supply. First, I want to go over the different connectors that we have here. Power supplies have two sets of connectors, one for the motherboard, one set of connectors for the motherboard, and the other for disk drives. Separated them here. For uh, motherboards, we have three different connectors. We have uh, a 20-pin ATX connector, a 6-pin, what is called auxiliary ATX connector, and then a 4-pin ATX12V connector, sometimes also called a Pentium 4 connector, since it seems that mainly Pentium 4 motherboards use this, although it's entirely possible for AMD Athlon-based motherboards to use this as well. So these are the three connectors that should be uh, on your power supply for the motherboard. Now, not all motherboards will have all three of these connectors. Some will have just the one, just the 20-pin connector. In that case, the other two can be left dangling in the system, I'll kind of tie them up, wrap them up out of the way. Uh, some may just have two of the connectors. For example, this motherboard is going to use the 20-pin connector and this 4-pin connector and has no provisions for the ATX auxiliary. So that one's simply going to be left, you know, dangling inside the system. Then we have the drive connectors. Drive connectors come in two types, a larger 4-pin type and a smaller 4-pin type. The smaller type is for floppy drives. The larger type is for, you know, hard drives, CD-ROM, DVD, etc., now, it doesn't matter which one of these you use. This has uh, three, four, five, six of the larger connectors and two of the smaller ones. But in general, it's best to balance it. In, that, in other words, um, although there are two of these on this one cable, since I'm only attaching two drives, it would probably be best to use two different cables for them to try to equalize the load. So I'll probably pick one of these for the uh, CD-ROM drive, one for the hard drive, and then one of these uh, smaller connectors for the floppy. Now, it's important that you get these connectors in right. The larger ones are pretty foolproof, but the smaller one for the floppy drive has been a little bit of trouble. I've seen um, over the last couple of years in my, my own classes, I've had at least two or three floppy drives get smoked right in front of me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing, but it happens. Uh, apparently, the connectors here are not keyed as well as they could be. In other words, it's possible to install them off one pin to the left or the right, or even upside down. So make sure you put this connector on correctly. If you're at all unsure, you know, check the book. We've got you know, detailed information as to how this connector is supposed to be installed. If you miss a pin to the left or the right, or you install it upside down, well, it won't be a very expensive mistake. Floppy drives only cost about $15. So, all right, I'm now going to install the uh, power supply. Simply installs from the top and slides to the rear. At this point, we could uh, attach the screws. There's four screws holding the power supply in place. Now, once the screws are installed, I'm going to feed the main connectors for the motherboard down through and plug those in first. And as I was saying before, this motherboard only uses two out of the three connectors, the large 20-pin connector and then the small 4-pin connector. The 6-pin connector is not used on this board. Now, these are keyed, so they should only go in one way. And the 20-pin connector has a latch on it. Well, actually, the 20-pin and the 4-pin connector both have latches on them, so make sure that those latches are fully engaged. Fine, there's the 4-pin connector right here. The 4-pin connector has two yellow wires in it, and that's to provide 12 volts for the high-powered voltage regulators for higher-powered processors such as the Pentium 4. Um, by using the 12 volt signal instead of the 5 or the 3.3 volt, it can draw less amps through those wires. So it's a way to have a basically run a higher powered processor without overloading the uh, rest of the circuitry. Now that the motherboard is cabled, I'm going to rent, take this uh, extra 6 pin connector and kind of just tie it up up here for now. And then I'm going to feed the drive connectors through and attach my drive. Now I need one, 
for the uh, hard drive and CD-ROM drive and floppy drive. And it has the hard drive connector or the CD-ROM connector here. drive here and finally the floppy drive okay now all the drives are cabled I can take the remaining power wires and simply kind of tie them up uh, top of the case here you could if you want you know use zip ties and attach them so that they were stable okay I'm going to set this down Let's see what we have at this point. And now the uh, final connection to the motherboard are these uh, small front panel connectors. I've got connectors for the front power switch, for the uh, LED, and the speaker that's in the chassis. Now you'll need to use the uh, manual for your motherboard in order to determine how those connectors are supposed to be oriented. There are usually some small connectors near an edge of the board. I'm going to plug these in now. So we've got Okay, I've now plugged in all of the front panel power switch and LED connectors. And at this point, uh, I want to make sure my all of my fans are plugged in. I have this rear chassis fan. Now this one has a disk drive style connector. Then I can just simply plug this into any loose drive connector from the power supply such as this one. If it had a uh, smaller connector for the motherboard, then I would simply plug it into the rear fan connector on the motherboard. Uh, most motherboards have three fan connectors now, one for the CPU, one for a rear fan, and one for the front fan. The nice thing about plugging them into the motherboard connectors is that uh, the motherboard connectors are three pin and they can monitor the speed of the fan. But uh, in this case, we've got it plugged into the drive, and that's that. So now the uh, next... Uh, uh, order of business would be to install the cards. Now, this motherboard happens to have built-in sound. If your motherboard did not have built-in sound, you would probably want to install a sound card such as this one. Um, this being uh, the case that this one has built-in sound, we're simply going to install a video card next and maybe a network card. Now, this video card is an AGP card, and you notice it has this little extra retention uh, tang here, which will be... Uh, engaged with our AGP retention mechanism that we added to the slot. Uh, to install this, it simply gets plugged in. Um, so we need to remove the bracket from this location. Take out one of these brass screws. Remove the metal bracket. Now the card can be installed. Simply push down. In this case, I'm going to move the retention mechanism out of the way until the card is fully engaged. Then take the uh, brass screw that you removed and reinstall it. Okay, and now the video card is installed. Um, we also have a network card, which we're going to install. I'll add that next. I'm going to skip over one slot, leave a little extra room next to the video card for some airflow. It's a good, good idea to alternate slot spacing that way. Don't use the adjacent slot unless you absolutely have to. Now this is a PCI card. It'll go into a PCI slot is one of the white slots on the board. Simply plugged in. And again, reinstall the screw that you removed in order to retain the card. OK. 
Okay. So now we have our video card and network card installed. Um, essentially, at this point, the system is now fully assembled. We merely need to add the covers and power it up.